What's your, uh, slightly illegal life hack? Disclaimer! This video is for entertainment purposes. Don't do the illegal things. Story 1. I used to work as a lawyer in the criminal courts here in Ireland. At the time, parking was very difficult, but the largest police station in Ireland was adjacent to the, to the district courts there. The criminal courts have moved since, but at the time they were at the Bridgewell. Anyway, outside that station there were loads of parking spaces, all marked police only. One day I was running late and decided I would take the ticket rather than be late for court, so I parked in one. No ticket. I started doing it regularly. Pretty soon, they were used to my car there, so I guess they all assumed it belonged to a policeman. It was great. Even if I got a ticket, I have saved multiples of the ticket cost by the time a few weeks had gone by. Several months later, it finally caught up with me. I was starting the car, getting ready to pull out when a cop held up his arm. Damn, I thought, and wound down the window. He said good evening to the judge and stopped oncoming traffic to let me go. I said thanks very much, and drove on. Thing is, I was in my early 20s, way too young to possibly be a judge in Ireland, where 40s would be young for that job. I think the cops collectively decided that anyone with the audacity to blatantly park in that space must be a judge. Who else would think they could get away with it? Saved me probably 10,000 at a time early in my career where I really needed the money. Once I was established in the spot, I would pull into it right in front of cops and nonchalantly get out and walk away. Nobody challenged challenged me. Long story short, if you break the law blatantly, the cops may decide not to challenge you. I mean, yeah, it's that kind of thing where, like, they say if you want to get away with the crime, just, you know, like, taking something that you're not supposed to, just look official. Look confident in what you're doing. Don't, like, sneak around like, oh, can it grab it? Just be like, yeah, no, I'm supposed to be here and take it. You put on, like, you know, some high-vis vest. Oh, it's a construction worker. They're supposed to be in there because... They go everywhere, right? Right? D of course, don't actually do that. Unless you're confident. Story 2. At school, we had a fingerprint scanner linked to an account we used to pay for meals. At the entrance to the cafeteria, there was a machine what they another scanner used to make deposits. I used to purposely use the wrong finger so it wouldn't work. It's worth noting that if you didn't have the funds, they wouldn't let you go overdrawn, not due to limitations in the system. Rather, it's probably best to not give 11-year-old kids the financial freedom to buy whatever food they want and have their parents cough up later. This is why there was a machine at the entrance, as mentioned, previously. So I'd go to pay, use the wrong finger, and the lunch lady would ask my name to take a note. I'd give her my name, and she would send me on my way with my lunch. It was never followed up on, and by the time I'd left school, I must have accrued some serious debt. I'd estimate around 800 pounds. That's two years, 380 days of a dollar for, or one pound 40 pizzas and a drink. Is it just me, or is there something kind of dystopian about having, like, fingerprint scanners in uh, schools with 11-year-olds? Like, at first I thought this was like a college campus or a university, as they would say over there, and we say here too. But it's like, I was like, oh, a college campus with fingerprint scanners. Boy, technology is really catching up in the colleges. But I don't know, having kids, like, scan your finger for payment, whoa, that just rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> Story 3. Updated a neighbor's unsecured Wi-Fi router with a third-party firmware that increased the output so I could steal even more of their internet. I used it for the entire year I was at that address. I had free internet for roughly two years, moved into a new apartment, and had called Comcast to have the internet set up. When the technician pulled up, I literally watched him get out of his truck, write some crap down, then got back in and left, so they typed it up as me not being home for the installation. Well, as it turned out, I had my own router and modem already hooked up, and they turned everything on at their end. But they forgot to turn that crap off. Two freaking years, 50 megabyte per second internet, not a single phone call from Comcast or a single bill delivered to my door. Story 4. I found a parking spot that has a parking meter on it, but by virtue of its location, that meter never gets checked. I've parked for free all day for over two years, not one parking ticket. In my town, meters all have little blinking red or green lights. Presumably, they just drive by and look for red lights at night. Always wondered what would happen if you made a little device with blinking green LEDs and just taped it to the meter. 
The device wouldn't cost more than a couple bucks, and it wouldn't be visible at night. Story 5. I never pay for parking and put a sign that says machine broken at 8.45 a.m. on my dash. The only time I get tickets is when I forget to take it out of my glove box. Edit. I see casual parking fraud is the theme of this thread. If it's private business and not the city parking meters, I just never pay the ticket. I've gotten at least 20 tickets at my tiny university in New Jersey and never paid. They don't tow cars and they have no idea whose car they're ticketing because I never registered it in the system in the first place. It's a pretty big hole in their system. I gotta say, there are, yeah, as this person have said, a lot of parking fraud <laughs> stories in this thread. But also, I do like that this one uh, specifically had, uh, you know... Uh, screwing over the parking structure at a university, because if you're already paying to be at a university, the fact that they're charging you for every tiny little thing they can and nickeling and diming all of these poor students when they're charging the most ridiculous fees for, you know, just college credits, yeah, maybe it's not so bad if they don't get that parking money. Um, I'm not going to say that you all should do this or figure out your own way to goof over the college that's uh, going to have debt hanging over you for decades, but, uh... Hmm. Story 6. I once was invited to the executive lounge at a hotel about five minutes from my place. They serve free wine and finger food there. Literally no security or room checking or anything. I go there sometimes after work when I feel like a glass or two by myself. I work security at an upscale hotel. We have a concierge lounge that anyone can literally walk right into as well. Only platinum members are given access to the concierge floor, which is the eighth floor. To access the eighth floor, you need to use your key card in the elevator, which will only work if you've been given access. Or you can take the elevator to the seventh floor and take one flight of stairs to the eighth. No one will ever know. Story 7. When looking for stuff on Google that's pirated, you might see a message at the bottom that says something like, in response to multiple complaints that we've received under the U.S. Digital Millennium Copyright Act, we have removed number results from this page. If you wish, you may read the DMCA complaints that cause the removal at moomandatabase.org. Colon. Complaint. With links to multiple complaints, click one of the complaints links. It should take you to Lumen Database. Look for the part that says allegedly infringing URLs and boom, one or more links to what you want. Personally speaking, at least 95% of the time, I get a working link. Story 8. I study and work at a university where I often park in the paid parking lots where you get a ticket printed at the time of arrival and then feed back in when you leave to calculate your total. I found that if you crumple up the ticket, the machine can't read it, and then I call the helpline and tell them my ticket is unreadable and they immediately open the gate. I haven't had to pay for on-campus parking all year. Story 9. Foxtel, Australia's cable TV provider, gives free two-week trials. You can download their app and can Chromecast to your TV. For about eight months, I've been creating a new Gmail address and resetting an old iPad. Yes, it's a tiny hassle, but I already pay around $130 per month for two satellite boxes, and that package doesn't have Chromecast functionality. I'll be honest, I can't think of many shows that would be going on for more than a couple weeks that... I would be willing to put in this kind of effort to watch. Um, I don't care that much about watching a ton of TVs and shows. I mean, I like to, but uh, if one goes away, eh, I, I'm not going to make new emails and reset an old iPad. That, that's too much effort for me. Story 10. We used to take our dog to day camp at PetSmart. It was good because he would get to play with other dogs during the day. It was expensive though, $20 a day. Only did it twice a week, but still $160 a month. They used to send us digital coupons for a free day for every 10 days we went. Well, I tried to use the same digital coupon and it worked for a while. Didn't abuse it or do it every time we went so as not to raise suspicion. Eventually, they updated the computer system to recognize if the coupon had been used before. Good run while it lasted. Story 11. Gem at the university is like a $300 membership for six months, but I've realized that they don't scan your card if you go up to the women's gym. So I've been using my old card to get the access card for the women's gym. I have two cards from the gym, so if I ever do get caught, I'll pretend I brought the wrong one in. It's probably not a good thing to do, but as a broken university student, I have no remorse.
Story 12. If a website disables your ability to right-click save their media in order to protect it, you can usually grab it easily enough by opening the page info in your browser and going to the Media tab, maybe called something else depending on browser used, and there should be a list of all media embedded on a page, pictures, videos, and so on. Story 13. Bought a good quality Steam mock from a store but didn't take the warranty. Six weeks in and it stopped working. I went back and they refused to take it back without a store warranty. So I took it home and claimed it and went to the same store in another town. It's a huge chain. I bought the same mop, switched it out of the box, went back in and said my wife had just bought the same product in their sister store and got an instant refund. Story 14 this one isn't really illegal, but if you do go to Dunkin' Donuts about 30 minutes before closing time, they will give you all their leftover donuts if you ask. If you don't, they just throw them away. Don't ask for totally free donuts. Ask for two donuts. Pay for them and then ask, is there anything you're looking to get rid of? And the employees will make you a dozen for free. But if you walk in asking for free food, that doesn't go over as well. Okay, so fun story regarding free donut sort of uh when i was a night manager of a gas station uh back in my hometown um every night we'd get you know the new donuts that come in i uh, usually buy like midnight or one o'clock or whatever get a stack of donuts in the boxes so then i'd go over to the donut case take all the donuts and we'd have to throw them away or theoretically what i could have done is also load a ton of those donuts into just a normal grocery bag, tie that up, and then when some of the delivery folks from Domino's came over complaining about the extra pizza that they had happened to make and that they were going to have to throw away, I would kindly say, hey, you know what, why don't I throw that pizza away for you because the box outside, I, I, that pizza box isn't going to fit out there, but you know what, Will, could you throw the this bag of donuts away out there for me because I don't want the inside smell on my donuts. So they'd give me the pizza to throw away and I'd give them the donuts to throw away. We were just helping each other out by throwing away things that companies wanted us to throw away. Story 15. If you drive a common car or SUV and you need new tires or have a part that is worn out or about to break, go rent a similar make slash model and switch stuff out. I know a guy that did this with an entire transmission. Just get the insurance and put the car down the block from your garage and call a tow when the work is done. Seems like this would go well beyond slightly illegal to me. Story 16. I recently got into propagating succulents. If you take a leaf and just leave it out in a greenhouse, it will eventually sprout a new plant. Instead of buying succulents slash succulent cuttings online, I go to a plant store slash Home Depot and scour the succulent section for fallen leaves. I come home with up to 50 leaves to propagate. Today I learned you can pirate plants. You wouldn't download a tree. Story 17. If you catch a bee in a jar, put it in your fridge. He'll fall asleep in the frost. You can then put him in your mouth. He will eventually wake up as your mouth heats him up. Then you've got a free bee in your mouth. You know, I was reading this, and then I realized just how ridiculous and bad this story is. This is not a good story at all. Because nothing about this is slightly illegal. This is a totally legal thing that you can do. So, folks... Don't worry about the law. Go out and fill your mouth full of bees. It's not illegal. It'll be fine. Okay? So, this story... What a, what a silly mistake they made. Story 18. I'm a college football fan and I park downtown right in front of the stadium. The max time at one meter is two hours, but I still park there. I get a $15 ticket every time, but the paid parking lots are $25 to $30. I just pay the ticket and smile as I see people that paid double and walked a mile. Story 19. If you want to buy a car that doesn't have a title, first make sure it's not stolen. Then register it online in the state of Vermont and they will make you a new title and send it to you without needing to inspect it. Story 20. The washing machines in my dorm have a payment system that uses your student ID instead of change for more convenient washing. But if you unplug the Ethernet cable on your box you swipe your card in, it doesn't charge you when it's connected again. Story 21. Never have tried it, but put the address you want the letter to go to in the return address spot, and then don't put a stamp on the envelope. 
It's really stupid to risk federal crimes for less than 50 cents, but I think this fits this thread. Yeah, I don't think this one would work unless the letter you're mailing is to someone in the same town because the person at your post office is gonna like it out, grab it. I'm sure they're not gonna look at it, but it's gonna get taken back and sorted at the post office and they'll be like, how did a letter from two states over arrive in the city that it was supposed to, you know, go to? This doesn't make any sense. Like, come on, folks. We all thought of this one. I don't think it works. Story 22. I used to convert online access on the PDF books into printable versions and then share them with classmates. Story 23. I play the stupid foreigner card if I'm caught jaywalking. I was nearly 18 before I realized crossing the road was a crime in some countries. In the UK, we just look both ways and go for it. Story 24. Not me, but have a friend who pays for one movie, then finds every good movie that's playing times everything and watches something like three or four movies in a day. Story 25. You can claim up to $300 worth of non-cash donation money every year on taxes without a receipt. An example would be you'd say you donated $250 worth of clothes. Story 26. You can stream almost any TV show or movie without paying for it just by looking for free sites. They are always shutting down and popping back up at new addresses. Just follow 123 Movies on Twitter. Yeah, sorry, I'm just, I'm not willing to, like, have my internet provider send me, like, an angry letter or shut off my service for illegally streaming TV shows and movies. I'll just, I'll just wait till they're on one of the, like, half a dozen different streaming services that I buy, and if they don't, I, I don't know, I probably don't care that much. I'm too old and apathetic. Story 27. I had a small burn and went to buy burn cream at Walmart for it. I realized before I bought the cream that Walmart sells aloe vera plants. I broke part of one off and applied it to the burn and I was all good. Story 28. As a broke college kid, go to Costco through the return entrance and keep walking to the cafe. Cheap pizza, salad, hot dogs, etc. Story 29. Scan tomatoes as potatoes and self-serve checkout. Also, ring up a TV as banana will allow you to pay by the weight of the TV. This is handy for when you want to watch a show in 4K but only have pocket change. Story 30. SciHub. It's a website that allows you to get access to basically any academic paper without paying for access to them. It's amazing. Yeah, frankly, I, I don't have a big problem with this one. They're academic papers. Come on, folks. Like, the amount that they'll charge for you to look at that stuff is... I, I actually don't know what it would be. I don't know. It might be $5. It might be $600. I'm, but yeah, they're, they're academic papers. I'm pretty sure the people who wrote them would like you to be able to read them. So, I don't know. Trust your own judgment. Don't break the law. Story 31. Sometimes I have to park downtown for work. Parking for an entire day costs $35, but when you hit the lost ticket button, it's only $25. So you bet your A, I lost my ticket each time. Story 32. When I was running low on food, I would eat the free breakfast at the hotel two minutes from my apartment. Story 3. Keep getting Amazon Prime by creating new emails every month and signing up for the free trial. Story 34. I turned my unused satellite dish into a Wi-Fi antenna strong enough to steal a neighbor's unlocked Wi-Fi. Story 35. Never break two laws at once. If you're speeding, don't look at your phone. Story 36. I steal all the napkins at Taco Bell. <laughs> Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.